Hello everyone, my name is Pixelriffs, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. See, I told you I was going to work on the beekeeper's house between episodes. I have spent a bunch of time just kind of freestyling this structure, which is why I haven't done a step-by-step -step tutorial for this, because I was basically making it up as I went along. I made a bunch of mistakes, and I just tried a bunch of different things, and eventually settled on something that I actually kind of like. Bit of a similar style to the fishing shack in terms of like the rounded roof sort of style. We're using some of the same materials that we've used in our first build, but I wanted the walls to be covered in like growing vines, like wisteria or whatever kind of climbing plants grow on the outside of a house. In this case, naturally, it was going to be azalea leaves because you've got those beautiful flowers in some of the blocks. And that may have driven the bees a little bit mad because I think <laughs> I have broken the AI of these bees. You can see that they're not really buzzing around the flowers in front of them. They are trying to get to something outside of the area itself. And while they have continued to produce honey, they're not producing it particularly fast. So I might regret this decision. I might have to either build a honey farm somewhere else or remove all of the flowers from the surrounding area so that my bees will actually do anything because the flowering azalea blocks and shrubs will be part of the set of blocks, a set of flowers that bees look for when they're trying to pollinate. So unfortunately, yes, doing this may have messed with the bees inside of here, although it might be something to do with the blocks around them. And maybe if we block out the farm a little bit more, maybe put some solid blocks underneath here or something, then they won't think they can pathfind diagonally out through all of this glass. Anyway, as you can tell, the outside of this building is done. The interior is anything but done. It is a complete mess in there. It's just got the farms and very little else. A lot of the interior feels very uneven. And honestly, I want to decorate this in a way that hides some of the moss and stone and stuff from the outside and makes it look like the beekeeper is actually living relatively well. And I want to include some of the... <laughs> There's a grass block in here. I want to include some of the honeycomb blocks that we've made in the previous episode because I really like honeycomb blocks. I think they're a really nice looking block. And to go with this rich orangey gold color, I want to work in a little bit of green, but not the green that we have here in the moss. I actually want to work with a bit of terracotta, which means we need to take a trip back to the Badlands. We can talk about terracotta and we can even talk about concrete and the differences between the two because they're colorful materials in much the same way as wool. They can be dyed 16 different colors, but they have some distinct differences. Before that though, I want to do a little bit of work with cactus because cactus is what's going to be providing the green dye that's going to be used for dyeing all of the concrete and the terracotta once we have it. But right now, all I'm doing is growing cactus over here on this little island alongside all of the other flowers that provide the dyes for the rest of the game. And cactus is sometimes a little bit finicky to work with because if you're not standing really close to the cactus, some of the drops can end up falling onto the cactus and being destroyed. In that case, we got lucky, but this time around, if I, <laughs> if I intend intentionally step away. There we go. Very, very close to destruction, that one. And this one here, uh, that one looks like, uh, yeah, it was kind enough to us because we ended up close enough. So I'm going to take down the rest of this cactus and I have a couple more in storage, but really about 12 cactus is all I have. That should be enough though, because we're going to spend a bit of today setting up an infinite cactus farm. We've got our sugarcane here, we've got our crops, we've got our pumpkins and melons underneath here, which I might as well check on because we haven't seen much of these for a while. Let's briefly step into here, which I didn't really do much on the interior of either. And look at that, lovely. Tons of melon slices, plenty of pumpkins in there. Perfect for trading with farmer villagers or, I don't know, decorating if you have really weird taste in interior design. Maybe if we're looking for green blocks to decorate with, we'll put some of those in here. But for now, I think I'm going to go ahead with my plan of setting up a cactus farm. <laughs> and we're going to do that over here between our crop field and our sugarcane farm. And it's going to be a very simple, very small cactus farm for now. We're probably just going to plant... I don't know, eight cactus for the moment. In order to do that, we're going to set out blocks of sand in kind of alternating spaces, because remember, cacti don't really like growing next to each other. In between each of these areas, we're going to build up with two temporary blocks, which I can use scaffolding for. We're going to place a fence gate on top of each of these pieces of scaffolding, and we're going to open up these fence gates. Then we can plant a cactus on each of these pieces of sand, and any time one of the cacti grows up, it's going to detect that there's a block next to it, and it doesn't matter that the fence gate doesn't have any kind of collision while while it's open like this, the cactus will break because it can't grow up next to a fence gate. If I try and place a cactus on the top of this block here, if I pillar up and try and place something, it's not letting me do that right now. And any cactus that grows into that area will break 
automatically. It still tries to grow, even though it knows that the cactus up there is going to break. That's just how cactus works. Around the outside, we're going to wall off an area using bricks, because I feel like bricks would look kind of nice next to all the cactus in the sand. For now, this is just temporary, because this is a temporary cactus farm after all. We're just going to generate a little bit of green dye for the moment, and then... I think we'll end up moving a lot of this stuff later anyway. The sugarcane farm is pretty permanent, but the crop field will end up going. We'll end up moving the cactus farm, building a bigger one somewhere else. We'll, we'll do a variety of things with the cactus in future, but for now, this brick wall is all we need. Well, we might need a couple more brick blocks in a second anyway, because we're going to build a collection area just here. We're going to have a hopper running into, I assume, a double chest, because sooner or later this farm is going to produce more cactus than we will really know what to do with. And we'll put two water buckets, one at the back here and one in the other corner here and that doesn't quite reach the hopper okay so one of the things we could do to remedy that is put a bucket of water there on top of this block and that should yeah that gets a little bit closer to the hopper okay and all we need to do is move our hopper one block further in so the chest for collection is there and the hopper is right here <laughs> and that should now collect any cactus that ends up in the water streams hmm and we do have one dead spot here where potentially the cactus could flow in here and then just stop in fact here's a pretty simple way we could eliminate some of those problems just reorganize the cactus so there's seven instead of eight and those back rows aren't mirroring each other. We've already got a couple of cactus coming into the farm though so we know that it's working and while part of me wants to sit around and watch the cactus farm for a while to see if I can demonstrate what happens when one of them grows, uh, I don't know if I really want to wait around that long because they are quite slow growing. This is all based on random ticks which are the same thing that causes crops to grow and that has to happen with the player in a 128 block radius. Outside of that radius, if your cactus farm is further away than 128 blocks, then you're going to find the cactus doesn't grow at all and it's going to grow when you're in the area. So despite the fact that it's built in the spawn chunks of our world, the cacti aren't going to grow unless we're physically here. And we need to be elsewhere for the next segment of the video because I need to go out to the badlands that we found near our desert and we need to talk about terracotta. Man, I was really hoping one would grow while I was explaining that, <laughs> but never mind. Let's go to the desert. Hey folks, welcome back. So I came out via the desert temple, slept for the night because it was already dark, and we are now looking at the Badlands biome, our primary source of terracotta, or at least it was for a little while. We'll get to talk about that a little bit later. But first of all, we need to run over here and grab some blocks. The main thing we're after here in the Badlands is regular terracotta, which is the one that you'll find the most of, especially on the surface. As you dig further into the Badlands, you'll notice that there are usually a few stripes of the different colors, and they will go all the way through the remainder of the terrain here. The reason we're after regular terracotta and not any of the different colored variants is that this is, of course, course the one that you end up dying in much the same way that regular glass gets dyed into the different colors of stained glass. It's not like wool where the white one is the blank one that you dye all sorts of different colors. There is a base terracotta color meaning that there are actually 17 colors of terracotta in the game rather than 16. Having climbed up to the top of this Badlands plateau you'll notice there are a few oak trees up here with some very very dry looking leaves and also some coarse dirt which is actually something we haven't had a chance to talk about much in this series so let me grab some of this and take it home with us. For the sake of this video, we're going to be grabbing just over two stacks of regular terracotta because we need to dye it in batches of eight. And I want to show you all 16 colors side by side along with a block or two of the regular terracotta. Also, take a look at how white the white terracotta looks in these surroundings, in the context of all of these other colors, and hold that thought, because we're going to come back to it later. <laughs> While we're here in the desert, I might as well dig out a little bit more of the desert temple so that I can bring back a few stacks of sand as well, because we will need sand in order to craft concrete powder. The good thing about sand, though, is that when you're using a diamond shovel, even as low as, I think, efficiency three, you can basically break sand instantly, so it's nice and quick to harvest a lot of it. The last thing I'm going to do is check how much gravel I have left in my stone chest because I have a stack or two of it here but it looks like we are going to need to go and get more. I'm going to get that from the nearest blob of gravel underground which is usually pretty straightforward to find. You can even get it in deep slate layers now so it's nice and easy to get hold of gravel if you want lots of it. But if you're having trouble locating gravel there are certain types of windswept hills which have massive patches of gravel in them so you can find some there. You can find it in the floor of cold oceans. You can even barter it from piglins in the nether if you've got a lot of gold on your hands. If before I go to bed, we're going to quickly check on the cactus farm. Oh, it's produced a couple more. Excellent. So, 
Terracotta. Let's talk terracotta. Let's go and grab all of the dyes from our island over here and let's convert this terracotta into all 16 extra colors. Just like stained glass, you make terracotta by placing one die in the center of a crafting table with eight blocks of terracotta around the outside. And if you've got a lot of different dyes in your inventory as you're dyeing terracotta, remember that the right click menu in the crafting interface will open up all of the potential crafting options for that range of blocks. So it's kind of useful instead of waiting for red terracotta to cycle around here if you can just right click and select it from that interface. Oh, and it's always more effort than I expect to craft 16 colors of something. So this is the full range of terracotta colors, starting with the regular terracotta and then obviously the red through green, blue into the pink. And where on earth is a zombie converting into a drowned? Hello? Is that below here somewhere? Sorry, that was just really loud. It kind of startled me for a second. So obviously here we have the grayscale range at the end and then brown right here at the very end. But you'll notice if we take these out of the context of a Badlands biome or even out of the context of each other, when we remove one of these from the terracotta block spectrum we have here, you'll notice they're actually fairly different looking. I think white terracotta is a really good example of this. Take it out of the context of the Badlands biome, we'll put it next to the sheep for example, and it resembles the sheep's legs more than it resembles resembles the sheep's wool. It's actually quite a pink block. The other one that really shows a difference is cyan, because right here next to the other blue colors, it looks relatively at home. But if you take it out of context and put it over here, that just looks like a gray block to me. So what the terracotta range of colors does is take the dye that you're using and adds it to the orangey kind of, you know, earthy undertone that terracotta already has. It's effectively every single color that we can have in Minecraft, but with a little bit of orange undertone added to it, which is why it takes to warm colors pretty well. Like that is pretty recognizably red. And on this end of the spectrum, those are pretty recognizably pink, but it turns white into a slightly pinker look. Even the gray range here looks a little bit brown. This is black terracotta next to brown terracotta. And honestly, if you saw this in isolation, you'd probably think this was brown, but the texture is even a little bit grainy, kind of indicating that these are more earthy textures of blocks. We can contrast that with concrete. In order to make concrete, we first have to make some concrete powder. So I'm going to grab some bone meal so that we can get a little bit more of the red dye from these rose bushes. And in a crafting table, we're going to put one piece of dye along with four blocks of sand and four blocks of gravel, which will give us eight blocks of concrete powder. So we don't really lose any blocks in the process. You just need four of each type in order to create the concrete powder in the first place. And concrete powder has a more rich color. It's a lot more vibrant than the terracotta is without the influence of that original terracotta block. There is no plain concrete powder though, you have to make it with some kind of dye involved. Concrete powder, much like the sand or gravel that it's made from, is a block that's affected by gravity. It will fall if placed without any kind of supporting blocks. And if it comes into contact with water, whether a water source block like this or flowing water, it converts into a block of concrete, like so. And by contrast with the terracotta, concrete is a lot more vibrant. It's a lot more saturated and is sort of the full color block of any of these 16 colors that we get in Minecraft. It's even probably more colorful than wool because wool has a lot of highlights and shadows in the texture, whereas Concrete is the closest we get in Minecraft to a solid block of that color. Here we go. This is red wool next to red concrete. You can really see the difference in texture. Concrete is much, much flatter and doesn't have as many shadows and highlights as the red wool block does. For a full comparison, I'm going to go down the line and make all 16 colors of concrete and concrete powder as well, and then we'll really start to see the difference. So at last, after a lot of effort, <laughs> we have ourselves all 16 colors of concrete powder and concrete so that we can definitely see the difference between that and the terracotta. Let's pull out the blocks that I pulled out earlier. Look at cyan, for example. You'll see that that one is a lot less mistakable for gray. And once again, all of these colors are super saturated and super vibrant. That doesn't mean we have to convert the concrete powder into concrete all the time though, because you might find some interesting uses for all of the concrete powders as well. You just gotta make sure they don't come into contact with water, otherwise they'll all end up turning into concrete again. So if you're planning to make an ocean build or something like that, plan very carefully. Frankly, having solid colors in the game is super useful though, and this is something that people used to do with the terracotta range of blocks a lot, was retexture them so they looked a lot more saturated like this. Now we have green concrete like this in the game, it's even possible to set up a large area of this and produce green screen style effects in Minecraft if you want to. And thankfully our cactus farm has been producing enough cactus that I could probably make a go of that now. But we are not quite done here, because there is a range of blocks that we now have access to now that we have all 16 colors 
colors of terracotta, and we spotted a block or two of this before. You'll see it in some of the Savannah Village houses and the ocean ruins that we have raided. We need to look at glazed terracotta. And for that, I'm going to dip back into the barrel here, and we're going to smelt all of the different colors of terracotta with the exception of regular plain terracotta, which does not have a glazed pattern. And with all of the colors of glazed terracotta, if I open up my inventory, you'll see that these are really very different. They have much more intricate patterns than the textures of most blocks in Minecraft, and as such, people can sometimes find them a little bit difficult to get into. But the cool thing about glazed terracotta is that each of these patterns is rotatable, and if you want to, you can make some pretty nice floor patterns as long as you're okay with your floor being in a kind of 2x2 two two formation like this. So red has this really kind of floral, rosy kind of pattern to it. Orange is weird because it contains a lot more cyan, but you can make some interesting floral patterns with it, and if you wanted to, you could have them face in a completely different direction depending on which way the player is facing. So you can have the orange on the inside or the outside or any combination of the in-between. Yellow has a variety of patterns going on, including a little bit of white and brown in there. Lime glazed terracotta is perhaps the most literal out of all of them. It does look like slices of citrus somehow. If you arrange green glazed terracotta the right way, it has these circular patterns that can intersect. There are some like light blue, which is slightly more abstract and geometric, look kind of cool and frosty. Cyan has a pretty obvious creeper face on it that you can rotate in different angles. Blue has more of a shell kind of pattern. Purple has this kind of hilt of a sword over here, and it's got the silhouette of a pickaxe in this top corner. But if you end up rotating it, you can end up with some really interesting results where they all kind of intersect and cross over in the center there. Magenta is is not everyone's favorite because it produces these massive arrows, which honestly, if you're building something kind of cyberpunk, could be worth having on the floor as an indication of which direction to go. Pink has a kind of floral sakura blossom pattern to it, which I think looks really nice. White terracotta has a lot of blue and yellow in it, but it's a very pretty pattern, almost like a kind of sun in the center there. Light gray is sort of the classiest out of all of them. It looks a bit like a Roman mosaic with bits of cyan embedded in there. Gray is another one of the more abstract ones if we position it like that that it can create a couple of patterns, but they're always slightly offset from each other. Black is pretty stylish if you're in your goth phase. And finally, brown is another one of the more geometric patterns. But all of these are a lot brighter and more vibrant than their terracotta counterparts. They actually match with concrete a lot better than they do with the terracotta itself. Like if I crouch so that we see less of the terracotta here, you can really see that it matches up with the concrete vibrance a lot better, which is why you'll end up seeing people pair them with concrete more often than terracotta. But it's good to know that these blocks exist, even if they can be a little bit trickier to work with. And if you notice some similarities in the patterns, if you notice some areas where the textures could connect and flow together really well, try out different patterns, because you can end up with some really interesting results. As for me, I have to figure out where in my storage system all of this stuff is going to fit, so I think we're outgrowing our storage room pretty quickly at this rate. But before I pack everything away, I may as well also show you a little bit more about coarse dirt, because I mentioned grabbing that from the Badlands biome, and it's because it's crafted in a somewhat similar way to concrete powder. We need some dirt and we need some gravel. If we put these in a 2x2 crafting interface at opposite corners like that, I think this is a shaped crafting recipe so you can't really craft it any other way, you'll get four blocks of coarse dirt. And coarse dirt has a couple of interesting and unique properties. For a start, it is a block that cannot be grown over with grass. Given adequate light, a dirt block like this with grass blocks nearby will ultimately be grown back over again by grass. But if I place some coarse dirt down, the coarse dirt, which has a little bit more contrast in the texture there, is going to stay that way permanently. It's kind of similar to the rooted dirt that you find growing under azalea trees, actually. If we end up placing this rooted dirt or coarse dirt anywhere around here, the grass is not just going to grow back over it. And that can be really useful if you want to texture a dirt path, for example. Speaking of dirt path, right-clicking on some coarse dirt with a shovel will convert it into the dirt path block, and breaking it again will turn it back into regular dirt from there. You can also hoe coarse dirt to turn it back into regular dirt, and that actually makes dirt renewable technically because you can combine it with gravel which you can get renewably by bartering it with piglins and create more coarse dirt turning it back into regular dirt using your shovel to turn it into path blocks or your hoe to just convert it straight into dirt. Dirt is obviously abundant in default generation you're going to find it basically everywhere but that's a really useful thing to know for challenge maps if you're stuck in a desert landscape or a sky block environment where you have limited access to certain resources as soon as you get hold of two dirt and two gravel you can make four dirt and from there you can just 
just keep farming it as long as you have access to gravel. As far as where all of this is going to fit into the episode, I think we now have a few more colourful materials to decorate the interior of our beekeeper's house. And so with a little bit more time, and now that the glow vines have grown to the floor, we're probably going to do a bit more work on the interior. Hey folks, welcome back. So we haven't quite finished the interior here yet, but the beekeeper is now living in much more luxurious surroundings. And I wanted to make sure he had at least a couple of flower pots in here so that we can add some touches of color and touches of class to the place. We'll put an oxide daisy up here. I think maybe a lily of the valley in the pot over here. We could also put a cactus in a pot considering that's what's got us all of the green dye for this terracotta that's now on the surrounding walls. I love throwing in bookshelves as well, along with the glazed terracotta. They're one of the more detailed blocks in Minecraft. And this mezzanine floor, I'm not entirely certain about. We could have blocked off the entire thing, but I wanted easy access to the chests up here because if we empty out all of these honey bottles by turning them into honey blocks, we can simply feed them back into the system because we get empty bottles out of that as a result. As you can see though, I do need to do something about the bees because unfortunately it seems like they aren't returning to these flowers after all. So I think we might actually need to replace a bunch of the azalea leaves on the outside with regular azalea instead of the flowering azalea after all. Or maybe we could mix in some other leaves so that it doesn't look quite so uniform across the entire thing. We will see. But but I wanted to add a couple of things here at the end of the episode. First of all, if you haven't found a Badlands biome but you want to work with terracotta, there is another way of doing that. And that is right here in this chest. We've got a bunch of clay blocks, which you can get by reforming clay balls. You can grab these from your local lush cave or even find them in riverbeds or swamps or a few other places around the world. And if you smelt these in a furnace in much the same way you'd smelt clay balls to get bricks, a full clay block will get you a full block of terracotta. Terracotta used to be called hardened clay for this purpose and the different variations on it used to be called stained clay instead of colored terracotta as it is now. So if you're at all confused about old episodes of videos where you see people saying stained clay, that's what they're talking about. And yes, I may have set up a few extra furnaces in here so that the whole glazed terracotta process went a little bit faster. The last tip is about these glow berries, and the glow berries are currently hanging down in the foyer, which is another reason I didn't want to cut it off with this mezzanine floor because I actually kind of like the glow berry vines dangling down here. I do wish we'd have a few more glow berries growing naturally on them, but we can bone meal any of the cave vines here to get the glow berries to grow. The problem is when they dangle down a little bit too far and we end up walking through a curtain of them to get into the house. Well, now in 1.18, you can actually do something about that. If we right click the end of each of these glow berry plants, the cave vines, while holding a pair of shears, the plant will no longer grow any further which also means you won't get any more glow berries growing from them, so we'll have to grow those ourselves using bone meal if we want another set of cave vines. And I'm going to add one more to that plant there. I think we still need to shear the end of it. Yes, there we go. It says plant cropped in the subtitles to indicate that that has been done. And that means you can use these plants decoratively without having to worry about them continuing to grow and dangling down all the way to the floor, which is good because they can grow out of control if they want to. But with that little project taken care of, I'm going to tinker a bit more with the interior between episodes, but but that is all I wanted to cover in this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. Thank you so much for watching. My name has been Pixel Riffs. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.